good morning students uh, we have already discussed about the in the previous lecture about the introduction to acarines today we are going to discuss about the soft ticks as you remember the uh, among the acarines the order acarina uh, there comes the or the class acarina there comes the uh, order exodoidea under the exodoidea there are two types of ticks the hard ticks and the soft ticks Okay, so today we will be discussing about the soft ticks. The soft ticks come under the family Argacidae and uh, there is a particular difference between the hard ticks and the soft ticks. So the family Argacidae consists, Argacidae consists of the soft ticks which consists of the foul ticks and the tampons. Okay, uh, now this is the common name. And remember one thing that you have to remember the common names in entomology, specifically in acarology. You have to there are many common names against the scientific names, so you have to remember these common names along with the scientific names. Now next comes is the family Axodidae. These Axodidae are also known as hard ticks or the true ticks. Now as you can see, there is some kind of a difference between the soft tick. And there is some kind of a difference between the hard tick. Now, what is this difference between the soft tick and the hard ticks? So, how we can you differentiate between a soft tick and a hard tick? So, there are many differences, but the first and foremost difference that you will see between the hard tick and the soft tick is from the outer tegument. As you see here in the photograph, in the photograph on the left uh, left hand corner here, this photograph shows the dorsal view of the soft tick. And this right hand corner you can see here this is the dorsal view of the hard tick. So in case of soft ticks the outer integument is leather like or leathery and mammillated. Mammillated means you will find some kind of raised portions leather like portions. So it is a mammillated leather like and there is a do the dorsal shield is absent. So do what is a dorsal shield? Dorsal shield is nothing but is a thick chitinous covering which is absent in case of soft ticks but it is present in case of hard ticks. So, so let us see what is in hard ticks as you can see in the photograph. So in the hard ticks there is a dorsal chitinous covering which is called the scutum. So this dorsal shield or the dorsal hard chitinous covering is the scutum. Now this scutum covers the entire body. It extends from the posterior portion of the basus capitulum to the posterior margin of the body in case of the male ticks adult male ticks whereas the scutum is partial so scutum is complete in case of adult male ticks whereas it is partial in case of female ticks so it is partial in the larvae it is partial in the nymph it is also partial in case of adult female ticks this is mainly so as to allow the adult female ticks to engorge or the larva or the nymphal stages to engorge completely when they have a blood meal so this is what you see is the first point of difference. You can easily differentiate on this basis of the first point. Remember this first point always. Now coming to the second point. In the second point of difference, in the soft tick, can you see any mouth part? See the photograph here. I am towards the pointer, towards the cursor. Can you see any mouth parts here? No, you cannot see. Okay, I will show you a better photograph in the, in the next field, in the next slides. The mouth parts in case of the soft ticks are not visible when seen dorsally. So when you see from the dorsal aspect, the mouth parts are not visible. But from the ventral aspect, you can see the mouth parts. But in case of hard ticks, the mouth parts are projected anteriorly. The mouth parts are projected anteriorly. Hence, the mouth parts can be seen anteriorly. Now the second part, the eyes. The eyes may be absent or if present, there may be two pairs. So, there may be, it is, it is usually absent, but if the eyes are present, there are two pairs of eyes, two eyes on either side and where are these eyes located? You cannot see the eyes easily. These eyes are located in the supracoxal fold. So, what is the supracoxal fold? The coxa, as you know, the first part of the leg is called the coxa. The first, uh, bra, bra, uh, the first uh, division of the leg is walking appendage is called the coxa. So, just above the coxa, the where from the coxa arises there is a supracoxal fold and the eyes are located inside the supracoxal fold whereas in case of hard ticks the hard ticks the eyes may be absent or if present there are only one pair of eyes if the eyes are present 
there are only one pair of eyes and these are eyes are located on the lateral margins of the sputum okay so here the eyes are present on the lateral margins on the sputum dorsally whereas in case of the soft ticks the eyes are two pairs is present and they will be present on the suprapoxal folds so that is there located ventrally now coming to the respiratory organs the soft ticks they possess one pair of respiratory spiracles posterior lateral to the third coxa so as you can see there are four coxa so this is the third coxa so the so spiracles the respiratory spiracles will be located posterior lateral to the third coxa whereas in case of heart ticks the spiracles are located posterior lateral to the fourth coxa okay now coming to the fifth point of difference the soft ticks the sexual dimorphism is not marked what do you mean by sexual dimorphism sexual dimorphism means from the morphological features you cannot differentiate or distinguish between the male and the female sexes so sexual dimorphism is not marked but in case of heart ticks the sexual dimorphism is marked you can easily differentiate between a heart tick and the soft tick i told you the difference the heart ticks the male heart ticks it is completely covered with the sputum the dorsal aspect is completely covered with the sputum whereas in case of female heart ticks the uh, sputum is partial there are other differences also okay now let's come to the feeding behavior now in the feeding behavior barring a few exceptions the soft ticks are intermittent feeders what does this mean this means that the adult ticks they attack the animal in the night or in the dark hours take the blood meal and then hide in the cracks and crevices in the sheltered places in cracks and crevices under the stones okay in the sand depending upon the environment depending upon the location they hide whereas in case of hard ticks the adult ticks they attach themselves to the animal feed as long as they don't get engorged fully they don't get engorged fully now there is another difference now that is the uh, egg laying behavior so generally i told you the soft ticks generally they attack the animal feed and they come back into the sheltered spaces so after every blood meal the female tick is able to lay eggs okay so a female tick can a lay eggs multiple times in its lifetime whereas in case of hard ticks the female tick attaches to the body of the host mates on the body of the host it engorges completely on the body of the host and after it has engorged it falls and after falling it hides in the sheltered in the pasture in the uh, what under the mat where in the cracks and crevices and there it will lay the eggs and once it lays the eggs it dies about 90% of the body mass of the tick is converted female tick is converted into eggs so it can lay egg only once in its lifetime because after the egg laying the female tick dies now uh, another thing the behavior is the uh, these soft ticks they are very hardy they can withstand long periods of starvation even in absence of the host they can uh, stay alive without the blood meal for a long time for example the argus persicus which is called a soft tick of poultry it can survive in the environment without the host without a blood meal for 5 years but uh, the hard ticks cannot survive for long maybe for a few days okay okay so now this is the soft tick as you can see so this is the dorsal aspect of the soft tick now this is the ventral aspect of the soft tick now this is what you can see on the dorsal aspect of the soft tick this is a practical importance also and you can draw this figure in your lab journal now this uh, soft tick has got mammillated bodies okay this has got the mammillated bodies and uh, this is leathery in appearance and there are four pairs of legs and when you go to the ventral side you see the details now you see the legs that has got what the parts so this is the coxa this is the first coxa the five parts the coxa and second is the trochanter then third is the femur fourth is the tibia 
and then is the tarsus rather here they have shown a metatarsus actually there are five coxa trochanter femur tibia and tarsus these are the five parts okay now on the ventral aspect you see this is the capitulum here this part this part is a capitulum okay what is a capitulum capitulum is the base which on which the mouth parts lies what are the mouth parts the hypostome chelicere and the pedipalps of the palpi now as you can see here the capitulum here these are the mouth parts just above the so they are hidden they are present anteriorly but ventrally so you cannot see when you see from the dorsal aspect now this is some further details okay uh, so here you can see so this is the first coxa or the coxa of the first leg this is the coxa of the second leg so this is the right side this is the left side now here you see circular structures these two so just posterior to the first coxa or lateral to the first coxa and posterior lateral to the second coxa you can see the eyes so this is the first eye second eye this is again on the left side the first eye second eye okay now there is a anal opening here in the posterior aspect the genital pore is located somewhere in the anterior half in the midline so this is the genital pore or the genital opening and this is the anal opening okay so this is what we meant by the eyes are located on the coxal fold now here you see on the lateral aspect this one so this is the first second this is the third coxa again here you see this is the first see the cursor where i am the first second and the third coxa the left picture the middle picture and the right picture so just you see lateral posterior lateral to the third coxa is the spiracle respiratory spiracle this is on both sides the respiratory spiracles will be on both sides now the midline is the anal groove this is the uh, this is the genital opening or the genital aperture so in the posterior half you see this is the uh, anal anal opening or the anal groove anus and just uh, anterior to the anus you can see a groove this is called the preanal groove this is called the preanal groove this is a transverse preanal groove and just posterior to the anus you have the post anal groove transverse post anal groove so these are the grooves okay and as i told you mammulated can you see the dorsal aspect you can see they are mammulated that means they have got thick raised circular areas that gives kind like of a mammulated or a rough surface the surface is not smooth it is a rough surface so this is a thick mammulated area okay now this i am not going to the heart tick heart tick i will uh, will come see in the next lecture of the heart ticks now this is about the argus persicus this is about the tick argus persicus the soft tick of poultry so uh, with this argus persicus i will uh, complete the first part of the um, uh, i will complete the first part of this uh, uh, process and uh, of this uh, soft ticks in the second part i will com um, complete two more parasites so this is argus persicus or the fowl tick the This is a common argus species. So, what is argus persicus? This is the most common fowl tick, or it is also known as the tropical fowl tick. Okay, there are other species, but it is the most common, which is found in India, including Asia and Africa, as well as parts of Europe. Now, these ticks, uh, when they are fresh, as you can see the photograph below, just see the photograph below. These ticks, when they have the blood meal and they are engorged and they are freshly engorged with blood, they will look slaty blue in color. Can you see? the photograph below so they are slaty blue in color and they have a size of 4 to 10 mm that is 0.4 to 10 mm and width of 2.5 to 6 mm they are oval in shape as you can see the shape is oval the body surface is leathery the anterior part is narrow than the posterior part the anterior part is narrow than the posterior part and uh, as you can see the uh mouth parts are not visible from the dorsal aspect but from the ventral aspect you can see the mouth parts now 
when they are freshly engorged in blood they are slaty blue in color but when they are starved when they do not have the blood meal they look yellowish in color okay and these ticks can withstand the peer and how to differentiate between the ticks i told you the sexual dimorphism between the male and the females is not really marked in case of the soft ticks but there is a difference you can differentiate between the uh, male argus persicus and the female argus persicus on the basis of the size of the genital aperture the genital aperture in case of male ticks is slightly smaller than the genital aperture of the female ticks that is the only difference now what is the importance now these ticks they generally attack fowls they attack birds apart from that they can also attack other animals as well as human beings but generally these ticks where they are found they are found in the poultry sheds they will be hiding in the cracks and crevices of the poultry sheds they will be hiding in the uh, perches whatever the wooden material is there the floor the flooring the walls the or the wooden uh, perches are there these uh, these areas whatever cracks and crevices will find that will be moist that will be slightly humid and dark these are the hiding places okay even they can hide under the um, or these are the places where they can hide now what is the most important problem that arises now these ticks they usually attack the animals or the birds in the dark so during the nesting time when it is a night time when the birds are resting these animals with these ticks will come out from the cracks and crevices from their hiding or the sheltered places they will attack and they will feed in the night and this results in uh, pain irritation and lot the birds are not able to rest and this is the cause of tick worry as a result of this the growth of the birds if their layers the laying of the birds everything decreases okay now second is heavy infestations lead to anemia and blood loss so because of the heavy infestations uh, there will be generally loss of blood which will lead to anemia and we know that in anemia there will be loss of production loss of growth rate the animals birds may even die okay then the egg production as already discussed there will be decrease in egg production among the layers and the laying may be sometimes in heavy infestations laying may stop totally so if there is anemia the birds are not having a rest there is tick worry the birds may even cease laying eggs okay then there is tick paralysis now this tick paralysis i will discuss about details uh, when we discuss about the importance of ticks the or the impact of ticks now tick paralysis just remember this is uh, tick paralysis is caused by a toxin which is produced by the ticks and uh, these toxins they generally cause an ascending motor paralysis so this is a motor paralysis paralysis of the motor nerve and it is ascending in nature it sets initially in the hind part of the body and then slowly moves anteriorly or ascends anteriorly towards the anterior or the dorsal part of the body and these are mainly uh, because of the nymph and the adult stages of the ticks so uh, and this is mainly found in case of ducks okay so ducks when they are parasitized by uh, the nymphal and the adult stages of argus persicus they suffer from tick toxicosis or tick paralysis and this paralysis may recover or the bird may also die it depends upon the age of the bird it depends upon the physiological status of the bird everything apart from that these uh, argus persicus they are known to transmit pathogens for example they transmit anaplasma marginal of cattle they can even transmit borrelia anserina so borrelia anserina spirochetes so the spelling is a bit there is a mistake in the spelling this is anserina not n nanserina it is anserina n should be removed from here so this uh, as well as this uh, transmit a rickettsia called the egyptianella purulum now diagnosis the clear diagnosis is mainly based on clinical signs like anemia uh, decrease in egg production ceasing of egg production restlessness among the birds and the next is based on this uh, we can go for checking the cracks crevices uh, the wooden work the floors the all all the wooden material everything we can check for the presence of the ticks now let us see the life cycle of the tick this is the life cycle of the tick so as you can see uh, clearly the as i told you the adult female tick it takes the blood meal every night after the blood meal uh, generally it feeds on the for the on the birds for 2 hours leaves and again gets and hides itself in the sheltered areas 
After each blood meal, the adult female tick will lay eggs. And this adult female ticks, they generally feed for once in a month. And after the feeding, they lay the eggs. And they egg eggs 20 to 100 eggs at a time. This is in sharp contrast to the hard ticks which lay eggs in thousands. Okay. So they lay eggs only 20 to 100 at a time. It requires 3 weeks for the eggs to hatch depending on the temperature and humidity. Now after the hatching of the eggs, the larva, they come out and attack the birds. And they remain, they, they are not intermittent feeders. They will attack the bird, they will attach to the bird and have their blood meal for 5 to 10 days. So after 10 days, the, the larva will detach, drop off hide in the sheltered places, the cracks and crevices and they will molt within 7 days. So after the blood meal and after dropping off, it requires 7 days to molt or ignite into the first nymphal stage that is the protonymph. Now, these protonymph, they attack the blood, bird, feed on the blood. So these are intermittent feeders. They do not remain attached. The larva, they remain attached but the nymphal stages they attack the bird they feed again come back into the shelter like this attacking and feeding they will continue for two weeks and after two weeks they will molt in the second nymphal stage called the deuteronymph or deuteronymph deuteronymph protonymph and deuteronymph so there are only two nymphal stages here you have to remember the second nymphal stage will again have the same feeding behavior as the first they will they will feed attack and feed for two weeks and ultimately they will mold into two weeks so what is the time required the time required in the life cycle is from the egg if we see the egg requires hatching for three weeks larva requires attachment for one week four week after attachment and after dropping it requires another week so five weeks to convert into protonym after five weeks it requires another two weeks to convert into uh, deuteronym seven weeks and 7 weeks the deuteronymph requires another 2 weeks to convert into the adult tick ok and here you should remember the mating takes place in the sheltered spaces both adult male and females they feed they come back into the cracks and crevices in the hidden hiding places and there they mate and after which the female lays the eggs ok so this uh, another two weeks so total nine weeks are required for the development of an egg into an adult nine weeks is actually roughly that is around uh, two months more than two months okay now coming to control so how to control these ticks now these ticks since they are intermittent feeders so just spraying insecticides or acaricides on the birds uh, you cannot control so we have to strategize how to control so, so first important thing is that you have to break the life cycle how to break the life cycle you remember that the uh